Hi, everybody. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about flowcharts. And flowcharts are a very important tool for us to be able to communicate uh, our analysis steps, the steps we take to do analysis, as well as other GIS uh, processes. Um, you can also use them to document them for yourselves or for inclusion in the paper or report. Uh, and it's pretty easy to create them nowadays. We used to have to create them by hand. Um, nowadays, we have a lot of tools available. In fact, you can buy software just for creating flowcharts. There are also some cool new tools available on the web to be able to create flowcharts on the web. Um, but the tool I use most often is just PowerPoint. I work in PowerPoint all the time. I know it well, so it's the tool for me to go to for this. Um, and I've just opened up PowerPoint here with a new slide. And one of the first things I usually do is change the layout so it's just blank. I don't really need this over here, so I'm going to get rid of it. Now, I've scaled down PowerPoint, so it's a little bit smaller than normal on my screen, so I can do a video. But you'll see that the shapes up here that are almost everything I use to create a flowchart disappear when you make it small. So you just have to know that if you do this, you've still got the shapes menu and you can still get to all your uh, shapes. Um, when we're drawing flowcharts, the most common tools that we use are uh, boxes and parallelogram. Where's the parallelogram? Somewhere, yes, it can take a moment to find things in this tool. Okay. Uh, and then we also tend to use rounded rectangles. Um, you can also use ovals. Ovals is the more traditional one to use for start and end. Um, however, the rounded rectangles I think are a little bit easier to, to put text into. Um, and then we use diamonds uh, for our decisions. And these are the standard, um, actually they go back to IBM, uh, standard flowchart symbol. And let's see if I missed any. Oh, those are the main ones. So I'm not really happy with these text colors. Uh, not really good colors for me. In fact, a lot of times I will simply go to fill, click no fill, solid line, make it black. And I'm just dealing with black lines on white text. And this is pretty easy for me to then edit. So the rounded rectangle is then going to be either a start or an end. Oh, look, uh, PowerPoint's default is to make this dark blue. So when I type text in, it turns white. How annoying. I just need to go up here to the text color and change that to black, and I can see my start again. I'm going to use this start instead of the, the oval. Okay, And then I'm going to go ahead again, right click here. You can then edit text. And this would be for a process. Oh. Now, if you don't really want to keep doing this over and over again, you can also right click and say set as default shape. Now, when you create a new shape, it should use those settings to create that shape. Um, you can also, once you have your basic shapes, copy and paste them so you have multiple. Now, here we've got a data set shape. So we edit text. Or a data set. Um, you can also select all of the items on the page and change settings for all of them at one time. And right click the end to edit text, and this is a decision bubble. So let's put these together into a very simple flowchart. Um, one of the things that we might do is start here, then go ahead and get a stream shape file, and we might then buffer that 10 meters. Now the last symbol we need is an arrow to tie these together. So if we go back to shapes, you'll see there's this arrow connector. Now there's a bunch of different arrows and things you can do. These arrows, the connector ones, are special. With these, we can click on a shape, and these little red handles are if I click in that handle and then drag down to one of the handles on another object, then when I go to drag this object around, that arrow stays with it. They stay linked together. This is really handy when you're editing your flowchart. You just have these automatically linked up. Okay, it's really cool. Now, of course, I don't really like this arrow either, so I'm going to go format it, make the line color black, and I'm going to make a little heavier line. And I also don't really like that end type. I like these arrows better. And make them all bigger. 
So to me, that's a better looking arrow. Um, the flow chart, you can do what you want. It needs to be an arrow. The basic symbols need to be the standard symbols. If you use different symbols, which some organizations do, you just need to have a legend there, like root for map, so everyone understands what you're doing. Okay. And so now let's go ahead and buffer our stream. And I'm just going to copy and paste my arrow. So I can very easily then bring it down here to my buffer. And this creates a new data set. Now we have our buffered stream layer. Another arrow. Now, if I ended here, this would be a rather incredibly simple flowchart. Um, and you can see fairly quickly, we start to have space issues and organization issues. So you will spend a fair amount of time moving things around, trying to get things to line up. Sometimes these arrows will never line up correctly. That's all right for flowcharts, um, typically. Okay, um, now we have a buffered stream layer. What we want to do is another process. Let's say we want to grab another layer, like a parcel layer. And we want to find just the parcels that are within 10 meters of stream. So to do that, we have another process. And I go ahead and connect up my parcel to my process. And in this case, I'm going to also connect up my streams, buffered streams, sorry, to my new process. And I'm going to go ahead and clip my parcel layer based on my buffered stream layer. This will then create a new layer, parcel within 10 meters of a stream. And you can see why naming things in GIS uh, is important and often challenging. Now, if that's all we had to do, okay, we might just Go ahead and end. We're done. Yay. Um, but this is a pretty simple flowchart. It's rare that you would actually make one for something this simple. You could explain it in text pretty quickly. Um, if you had something else, like let's say uh, you then wanted to filter out the parcel um, that were just within um, over a certain size. Okay, then we might go ahead and have another process. And this would be where we'd say um, select area greater than 100 hectares. Okay, since we tend to work in meters. Oh, and I forget the spelling, you can probably figure that already. So this would be a select by attribute. Uh, oh, wait, we forgot. We didn't compute area first. Hmm, okay. So we better go ahead and compute the area. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and move my end over here. Um, let's see, but we need to export as well. We'll put another process in there. Export selected. Data. And that's going to produce a new data set. And you can see where we end up with some challenges with getting everything looking good. Fairly common. Um, I've done this a fair bit. Select, export, parcel within 10 meters of the stream, and over 100 hectares. Now, see, that's just kind of getting silly. So instead, we might say here, these are the target parcels. We might rename that to make our flowchart work better. Again, oops, oh, oh, the We'll link everything up. And there we go. Now, decisions. 
Decisions aren't used really heavily in GIS. We use a lot in programming. Um, but we do use them periodically, like we might make a decision here to say if there are no parcels, what would we do? Um, or you might actually have a decision that says in one case we want to do this type of processing, in another case we want to do another. Um, so I'm not going to use them on this one. Now, um, I think this is fine, but uh, students aren't really happy with me making things that look this um, plain. So sometimes, um, and also, so this is fine. I mean, I, I'm okay with this, but you may have seen on the website, we have nicer looking um, ones. You can go ahead and change the color for the shape. It is pretty common to go ahead and color code them based on the type. So I'm going to make these, oops, oops, let's make a blue. Blue looks good. Uh, like with cartography, pastel colors for large areas tend to work out better than using bright colors. So we can go up here and pick pastel colors pretty quickly. Okay, and now we have some nice pastel colors. Now, PowerPoint's pretty good at making a really nice looking stuff. So we can go into format, we can pick shadow, and we can just grab a shadow and add a shadow to this. So now you may see that it's actually got a shadow behind it. Um, you can also do a 3D kind of a thing to make your button or sorry your uh, your flowchart elements look like they're jumping out of the page um, it's pretty easy to make them look really nice uh, you don't have to for this class but certainly if you're going for publication or putting this in presentation you might want to do that all right so have fun with flowcharts